So we're going to talk about that and uh, see what God has to say. I think there's some freedom ahead for some of you if you can hang with this message, okay? Let's pray. God, thanks. We love you, Father, and you are so good to us. God, I pray that you'll open our hearts to hear this message, Father, because it means so much about opening our hearts and releasing our burdens. God, do something great in us. Thanks. We ask it in your name. Amen. So you got your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 11. We're going to start at verse 28. Then Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I'm humble and gentle at heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. You know, it seems like when you get burdens or problems, it seems it, it, it seems like it's not even an addition. It's like a multiplication table. They just kind of piling on, piling on, piling on. I read this story about a lady had had a skunk in her cellar. So she called the police station and asked for help. <coughs> they recommended that she make a trail of breadcrumbs from the steps of the basement to the back of her yard and then wait for the skunk to follow it out. The next day, she called the police station again and said, I did what you told me to do, and now I have two skunks in my cellar. That's kind of what happens. Problems get bigger and bigger. Burdens seem to get heavier and heavier. <coughs> we're in the third week of this series called You're Invited. And we're talking about all the things that God has invited us to do. All the freedom he has for us. If we'll just follow his words. So let's talk about what burdens are. Burdens are problems that have spun out of control. To the point that you can almost feel like they're unmanageable. Many times we deal, we'll deal with them by, by avoiding them as long as possible, or by simply running away from him. Charlie Brown, the great philosopher Charlie Brown, said, there's no problem so big that I can't run away from it. Of course, you know, and I know, that doesn't work. Because if you run away from a problem or a burden, it's going to be there still when you get back, and it's probably going to be worse than when you left, because you left it unattended. So, in these in these verses right here, I'm going to give you three things um, to learn how to work on being released from our burdens. Jesus said we can be released from our burdens. So I want to give you three things that can help you on your way. First of all, you need to recognize that Jesus is calling you. Jesus made a statement most people wouldn't expect a religious leader to make. Look what he said in Matthew eleven twenty: 20. Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy, carry heavy burdens. Now, I'm not with you, obviously, so I can't see if you raise your hand, but you know how many of us fall into that category? How many of us are carrying burdens right now? I would imagine that the vast majority of us are struggling with something, some kind of burden, and sometimes they feel too great to bear. Some people are struggling with a burden of guilt. You've committed sins in the past, and you just haven't gotten over them. Now, God's forgiven you. If you've asked God to forgive you, God's forgiven you, but you haven't forgiven yourself, and so you carry that heavy burden. And that is one thing about burdens, is that sometimes God has provided the remedy and we just don't fully grasp it. Or we add our own stuff to it. That's never good. Some are struggling with the burden of religious expectations. You thought that when you became a Christian, your life would be hunky-dory and nothing would ever go wrong. That's not true either. That standard is, is too high a standard to bear. Maybe you're struggling with a hectic schedule. I need to do more. I need to do more. I need to do more. No, you probably need to do less. And there are all kinds of other bur health, uh, of burdens we carry. Health problems, financial problems, emotional problems, on and on and on. As many different people as are listening to this and as many people that can see this, we all have different things we're dealing with. And if you're struggling through life with some kind or many kinds of burdens, I want you to know something. Jesus is calling out to you specifically. He's offering to help. Again, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy, hairy burdens, and, I, and what? I will give you rest. Sometimes the weight of a burden just overwhelms us, and we just feel like we're exhausted all the time. That's because we're carrying something we're not meant to carry. Give your burdens to God. Life doesn't have to be unbearably difficult. 
Jesus wants to set you free from your burdens. If you have burdens, Jesus will and wants to help you. I've said before that it's not like Jesus can but won't. It's not like he wants to but can't. He can and he wants to. But that first step is all you. That first step of turning those burdens over, that's all you. You've got to do that. Second, Jesus has something to offer you. Again. Oh, got to hit myself there. Okay. Let me read. It was supposed to be in the, in the notes, but I, I left it off. Verse 28. Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you, because I am humble and gentle at heart. And you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy to bear, and the burden I give you is light. Now, that doesn't sound, those verses don't sound like what we think the typical religious person should be. We think it ought to be backbreaking work. But, but look, look, Jesus doesn't talk about backbreaking work. He doesn't talk about strict disciplines or impossible demands. And he says, this is what I have to offer you. This is what life with me is like. And he gives four things. So let's go through them. First of all, he says, I'll give you rest. The Greek word uh, there for rest is anapausen, and it means literally an intermission or a vacation. Jesus is saying, I, come to me, all you are weak and heavy burden, I will give you a vacation. I'll give you a break from the day-to-day struggles of life. I'll give you a second wind. Notice that Jesus never promised us an easy life or a life without difficulties. You only have to take a look at the disciples and see that that wasn't going to happen. You look at the life of the disciples and it's obvious that sometimes being a disciple can lead you down a difficult path. But he promised us a good life and he promised us peace in the middle of the storm. John 16, 33, he says, I've told you all this so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you'll have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Man, Find a highlighter and highlight that verse in your Bible and put a bookmark on it so you know where to find it all the time. Take heart. I have overcome the world. There is nothing that's going to come against you that Christ can't handle. Nothing that's going to push you or, or cause you stress that God can't handle. Next thing he says, he says, I'm hum- gentle and humble at heart. I saw a skit in college. It was kind of irreverent. And it was really taking shots at some of the Christians on campus. And so the religious guy, you know, he talked like this. <laughs> it, was, it was so funny. And he, he approached the sinner. He said, you need to accept Jesus as your Lord and tyrant. And it took a second and then it all kind of rolled around the chapel as we thought, oh, he did say tyrant. Look, That line may have gotten a good laugh, but it's not who Jesus is. He's not cruel. He's not a tyrant. He's not oppressive. He doesn't beat his followers down. He builds his followers up. He's gentle. He's meek. Now, in Matthew chapter 12, which we'll get to next, starting next week, Jesus quotes this portion from Isaiah, Isaiah 42. He says, He will not crush the weakest reed or put out a flickering candle. He will bring justice to all who've been wronged. I think the word that best describes how Jesus deals with us is tenderly. Tenderly. He deals with us tenderly because he's gentle and meek. If you somehow have the idea that God is this big blue meanie in heaven, you don't know God. He's gentle and meek. Does he have a sense of justice? Absolutely. But he, he's given you all the tools you need to uphold that, to live that way. Third thing is, he says, is my yoke is easy. A yoke is a farming tool. It's the instrument that binds ox to the plow. So you have the, the plow that comes up in the middle, and then the yoke goes over the ox's, oxen's neck. And they just push. And so in, in hard ground... 
like Imperial Valley and hard ground, uh, you can imagine that for some, for some of these some of these yo uh, oxen that was hard work. But if somebody's already already plowed the field and you're just going back over, it's a lot easier. So Jesus is talking to people that understand agriculture, and he's saying, "Look, my yoke is easy. You put on the yoke that I give you." You pull my way, and the going's going to be easy. It's not going to be slogging through. Jesus promises followers that carrying his yoke, in other words, doing his work, is not grueling and backbreaking. He makes it easy. Next, he says, my burden is light. Some people believe that making a decision to follow Jesus means getting a whole bunch of extra obligations put on your shoulder on top of everything else you have to bear. You know, like having your boss give you extra work. In addition to my, my meeting my boss's demands and my other family obligations, now I'll be expected to give up my Sundays and Wednesdays and maybe my Tuesdays and Saturdays as well. Before long, they'll want Mondays, Wednesdays, or Tuesdays and Fridays too. You know, they think, oh, you know, I got all this money trouble and now they want me to tithe. I'm expected, and then they want me to give more. Look, Quit worrying about that. That's not the offer that Jesus makes. Instead, he says, I'll take away your burdens. I'll replace them with a burden that's light, a burden you can bear. Now, Jesus isn't saying that he'll deliver us from all sense of responsibility or obligation or commitment. He's saying that his workload is light. It's doable. You don't have to be stressed out over it. And if you are stressed out over it, you're probably doing it wrong. If you've got burdens, Jesus wants to help. Here's what he offers you. Look at this. A sense of rest and peace. A gentle way of dealing with you. A yoke that is easy. A burden that's light. That right there, folks, is what we get when we follow Christ. So, how do you do this? How do you release your burdens? How do you, how do you do it? Well, here's how. First of all, Jesus gives three commands here. He says, first of all, come to me. And it may seem kind of obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway. Jesus cannot help us if we don't turn to him. <clears throat> I sure wish God would do something for me. Well, have you talked to him? No, no, I don't want to bother him. What? <laughs> what? If you don't go to him, how's he going to help you? Come to me is the invitation that Jesus extends to all of us. When we come to him, we bring everything we have, we lay it at his, his feet. Our sin, our guilt, our shame, our problems, our burdens, our fears, our doubts, our dreams, our goals, everything gets laid at his feet. Give it all to him. This is how we enter the Christian life, and we need to do this every day. Every day, bring all of that stuff to God. Lay it at his feet. It's how you maintain the Christian life. Doing this, you know, coming to Christ and giving all your guilt, all your sin, all your shame, all your problems, all this stuff, that's not a one-time occurrence. That's a day by day, <laughs> and there are times for me when it's hour by hour. It's how we maintain the Christian life. Give everything to Him. Stay close to Him. It's a never-ending process of coming to Him, laying our cares and concerns before Him. 1 Peter 5, 7 says, Give all your worries and cares to God, even though He doesn't give a rip about you. Oh, wait. No, that's not what it says. Give all your worries and cares to God, for He cares about you. Let that sink in for a minute. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the creator of the universe cares about you. Cares about your issues. God cares about the broken water thing on my RV. And I know he's going to help me take care of it. God cares. The psalmist said in Psalm 55, 22, which I missed. Sorry about that. Psalm 55, 22. You know, and I go over these things and I still miss stuff. I'm not sure how that happens. Give your burdens to the Lord and he will take care of you. He will not permit the godly to slip and fall. 
that's a pretty good guarantee. If we're giving our all to him, we're doing everything we can for him, he will not let us slip and fall. And then Matthew, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. You've got to go to him. You've got to come to him. You've got to take those burdens, carry them, lay them at his feet, and say, Okay, God, I need you to intervene here. I need you to do something great. Secondly, he says, yield to me. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29. Take my yoke upon you. Earlier I mentioned that the yoke is a farming tool. And for the first century farmers, it was often used in a certain way. Whenever a young ox needed to be trained, he would be attached to a yoke, you know, two oxen attached to it. But the other one was an older, stronger oxen. And he would start pulling, and he would pull the majority of the, of the weight, and that younger one would just learn. He would follow in his footsteps and learn how to do it the right way. And then eventually down the road, he would be the stronger, older ox, and he would help train a younger one. So Jesus is saying, look, I'm going to take the biggest part of the yoke. I'm going to do all the hard lifting, the heavy lifting. You just follow along. Just learn from me. Let me do the hard work. Yield to me. Let me do the hard work. Walk beside me. I'll pull the load so you don't have to. Look, there's no, there's no question that some aspects of living the Christian life are tough. Being holy is difficult. Is difficult. Being obedient can be hard sometimes. Being faithful can be a challenge. But we aren't expected to meet this standard in our own strength. Let Christ pull. He says, my yoke is easy. Yield to me. My yoke is easy. Come on. I'll do the heavy lifting and the pulling. You just follow with me. Look at what Paul wrote in the book of Galatians. Galatians 2.20. My old self has been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So I live in this earthly body by trusting in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Christ wants to live through you. He wants you to give you his he wants to give you his strength. Yield to him. Let him have it. If you want to release your burdens, take his yoke upon you and let him by his strength carry you through. You're not meant to do this on your own. And if you're trying to do it on your own, um, I, I, there's a Greek term that applies to people like that. I think it's called knuckleheads. That may not be Greek, but you get the idea. Thirdly, he says, let him teach you. Matthew eleven twenty nine. take my yoke upon you. Let me teach you. A lot of Christians get discouraged when they, they forget. But the Christian life is a learning process. You know, it doesn't happen overnight. It's a process that we grow into. Yeah, your salvation occurs right then. But then you've got to be sanctified. You've got to change that way of life. If you have kids, remember when they were learning to walk? Remember the kids, you know, they had the little Frankenstein thing? And we want them to walk because we want them to be like, you know, fully mobile little humans. Then after they start walking, we're like, man, why did we teach them to walk? Now, they, now they're into everything. But that's beside the point. If you've got a kid and he's watching you, he's watching you, he's learning how to be a parent, how to be a human, how to be selfish, how to be generous, how to be all these. He's watching you and he's mimicking you. It's amazing how quickly you, you uh, clean up your language the next the first time your kid says something you say all the time. You think, oh, I need to not do that anymore. Jesus is saying, look, the same way a kid learns from his parents, learn from me, follow me. Jesus is more than more than eager to teach you how to live the Christian life. He says, learn from me. How do you do that? You read his word. You listen to sermons. You spend time with him. You spend your time with God's people. Jesus said, let me teach you because the Christian life is a learning process. You are going to get your knees skinned up every now and then. It's going to happen. Sorry. You know, I've told the church before that mechanically walking 
is falling forward and catching yourself on your next foot. You do it for the left, then you do it for the right, you know, and you're you're literally falling. The mechanism is to fall forward and then your foot catches you. That's why if you stub your toe on something, you can end up going to the ground because that foot wasn't there to catch you. I've done some of my best aerobic work uh, tripping because, you know, you get that your hands waving and everything's going on. Look, he wants you to learn. He's going to be gentle with you as you're learning. But he does want you to learn. And you can't learn if you're not teachable. You can't learn if you think you know everything. And trust me, if you think you know everything about how, what it is to be a Christian, you're not too smart. I don't know everything about being a Christian. I'm learning all the time. Because that's what the Christian life is. It's learning. It's growing. Jesus promised us a life that's a lot different from what most people think the religious life is all about. Yeah, the Pharisees and the scribes, you know, walked around and held their nose down at other people and made all these rules that were hard to follow. And we're going to talk about that next week. And none of that is what God wanted for us. He says, no, he says, look, look, here's what I'm offering you, not spiritual exhaustion. Here's what I'm offering you, a life of rest, a life of peace, a way that's easy, a burden that's light. The reason that it's, it, that we have a life of rest, of peace, a way that's easy, a burden that's light, the reason is because he's with us every step of the way to carry our burdens for us. He's not leaving us on our own. He's coming alongside us. He's with us. 1 Peter 2, 24, I love this verse. He personally carried our sins on the cross, in his body on the cross so that we can be dead to sin and live for what is right. By his wounds, you are healed. You can be released from your burdens. He'll take them. He'll set you free. Give them to him. Give it all to Jesus. Why are you holding back? What are you going to do holding on to it? Give it all to him. Your shattered dreams, your wounded heart, your broken toys. Give them all to Jesus and he will turn your sorrow to joy because that's who he is. He's the good shepherd. He says, come on. My, my burden's easy. Not going not gonna to kill you. I'm telling you right now that some of you are, are been, have been struggling so long with burdens. And that's not what God wanted from any of you. That's not what God wanted from, from any of us. He says, you know what? Let me, let me take it all for you. Let it happen. Let it happen. Take it to him. Go to him. Learn from him. Trust me, your life is going to be so much better because you did. Let's pray. God, thanks. Oh, Father, you love us, and you're good to us, God. I pray that our hearts would be open to hear from you, that our lives could be transformed by taking on your, your yoke, your burden, by learning to rest in you, Father. Thanks for your grace. Thanks for your love, God. You're so good to us. We love you, Father. Bless us now, we ask it in your name. Amen. Next week's message is called Letting Go of Legalism. Oh, won't that be fun? See you then. 